Barb Erickson's class library contains a class named World and another class named Turtle. The code in listing 2 on the right of your screen instantiates one object of the world class and populates that world with two objects of the turtle class. Every class definition has one or more constructors. As we will see shortly, constructors look a lot like methods, but they are specifically very different. They have different purposes and somewhat different syntax. If you don't define a constructor, when you define a class, a default constructor will be automatically defined for your class. The name of the constructor must always be the same as the name of the class in which it is defined. Just like a method, a constructor may or may not take arguments. You can define two or more constructors in the same class with the same name. These are called overloaded constructors. If the class defines two or more constructors, they must have different argument lists. To instantiate an object of a class, you apply the new operator to the class's constructor passing parameters that satisfy the required arguments for that particular constructor. Once the, arg once the object has been fully constructed, the constructor returns a reference to the new object. A reference is similar to a pointer in C++. The reference points to the object in memory. It is actually a little more complicated than that, but the complexities are beyond the scope of this course. The first statement in the code on the right of your screen applies the new operator to the constructor for the world class passing two integer values as parameters. This causes a new world object to be constructed. The constructor returns a reference to the new world object. That reference is then assigned to the reference variable named Mars, which in this case is of type world. Once the reference is stored in the variable named Mars, it can be used to access the world object for various purposes, such as being passed as parameters to the constructor for the turtle class. The text on the bottom right of your screen shows standard Java documentation for the world class constructors in Ericsson's media library. In this case, there are three overloaded constructors for the class name world. The first constructor takes no parameters. The second constructor takes a single parameter of type boolean. And the third constructor takes two parameters of type int. The third constructor was used in the source code on the upper right of your screen to instantiate the new world object.
Before we go any further, I want to talk to you a little bit about standard Java documentation. When you download and install the Java Development Kit from Sun, one of the programs that you receive is a program named javadoc.exe or javadoc.exe. The purpose of the Javadoc program is to allow you to rather easily generate standard documentation for your Java programs. What you are seeing on the screen right now is the is a portion of the documentation for the standard Sun class named Button. I'm not going to get into all of the details of how this documentation is formatted. I will simply tell you that it's largely connected by way of hyperlinks which allows you to jump from one place to another in a very efficient manner. I am going to scroll down a little bit though and show you that at the top there is usually some text information, some descriptive information. Then there will be a section called the field summary. It contains informa information on what kinds of data is stored in the an object instantiated from the class. Then there is information about the constructors. In this case the button class has two overloaded constructors. One requires no parameters while the other requires a single parameter of type string. Note that the name of the constructor is always the same as the name of the class that it is designed to construct. Moving down the page then is a summary of all of the methods that belong to an object instantiated from the class. And to this point the uh, descriptions have been rather brief. However, if we select one of these methods such as set action command that will take us to another part of the documentation that contains the description in a little more uh, detailed fashion. So that is your introduction to standard Java documentation. You can use the program named Javadoc EXE to generate standard documentation for the Java programs that you write. The table that you're now seeing on the right hand side of your screen is the summary for constructors for the world class in Barb Erickson's class library. As you can see there are three different overloaded constructors for the world class. One takes no parameters, one takes a boolean parameter, and the third takes two integer parameters that specify the width and the height of the world. The boldface constructor that you see on the right hand side of your screen is the constructor that was used to construct a world object in listing 2. Right here with a specified width of 300 pixels and a specified height of 274 
pixels. This world object's reference was then saved in the reference variable of type world named Mars. The last two statements in the source code on the right hand side of your screen were used to instantiate two objects of Ericsson's turtle class and to use them to populate the world object whose reference was stored in the variable named Mars. The instantiation of turtle objects is a little more complicated than the instantiation of the world object. The turtle class has four overloaded constructors which are now showing on the right hand side of your screen. At this point I'm going to mention a topic that I won't explain in detail until much later in the course. That topic is the Java interface. At this point I'm simply going to say that the world class implements the, an interface named model display and for that reason an object of the world class can be treated as if it is of type model display. The boldface constructor on the right hand side of your screen requires a single incoming parameter of type model display. You may recall that when the two turtle objects were instantiated in the source code that I showed you a few minutes ago, a reference to the world object was passed as a parameter to each of the turtle object constructors. The result of passing the world object's reference to the constructor for a turtle causes that turtle to then reside in that particular world. We could write an application using Ericsson's library that has many worlds and many turtles with some turtles residing in one world and other turtles residing in other worlds. The boldface turtle constructor that you see in the table on the upper half of your screen on the right hand side is the constructor that was used to construct both of the turtle objects in the last two statements in the source code shown at, on the bottom of the right hand side. Therefore both turtle objects will reside in the world object whose reference is stored in the variable named Mars. By default when the two turtle objects instantiated in listing 2 on the right come into existence, they will be displayed in the center of the world object that is referred to by the contents of the variable named Mars. However, that happens so quickly that you probably won't see it when you run this program. <coughs> 